A hero section is your first sales pitch. It's your first opportunity to grab someone's attention, to speak to them, and to make them convert. But why should the user care? Why should they stay on your website? How do we as designers make our hero section so that they are interesting, communicates or sells while also being unique and our own? Well, in this video, we'll cover a workflow that lets you create stunning, effective and unique hero sections to your landing pages. So we'll break this down into four steps. First, we have the message. What is it that we're trying to say to the user and how do we say it in an effective way? The second point is the desired outcome. What do we want the user to do? What's the action? Then we have the third, which is about finding inspiration. What will the structure of the website or the hero look like? What will this style be? Which leads us to the fourth point, which is about the design. And this is as important as the previous steps. Well, we do the designs here, but all these previous steps allows us to create a very thought out and well-designed hero. Now, let me jump into Figma and we'll take a closer look. Okay, so we're in Figma. First off, if you would like to subscribe to the channel, really, really appreciate it. Now, the first thing here, the message. The first thing when it comes to the message is gonna be the heading. Then we're gonna have the body text, and we're gonna have the visuals. But let's start with the heading. When it comes to the heading, we want to use only what's needed to convey the message. And this applies to all design, really. Only add what's needed. It shouldn't be too short and abstract, but it should definitely not be too long and drawn out either. I usually try to stay between 40 and 60 characters. And for this video, I have a case I'm basing my design on, which is Tim's personal website with weekly UI design tips on Figma and Framer. So if we're gonna craft a heading for this, then we might think about the keywords here. So it's gonna be a personal website and it's gonna be about weekly UI design tips on Figma and Framer. So either we could focus on the UI design tips part or we could focus on the Figma and Framer part, but I definitely think we should have weekly in here because that's a pretty important thing i think to this value proposition we're doing weekly design tips so let's say weekly ui design tips and tricks let's go for that then we have the body so how can we support the heading in delivering the message how can we add the additional context here with the body text that really supports this heading, that makes our point come through to the user. And once again, it shouldn't be too short, it shouldn't be too long. I'm usually aiming for a maximum of 140 to 170 characters. I'm usually doing it a lot shorter. So once again, based on our test case or example case here, let's say that every Wednesday, you will get, every Wednesday you will get Figma and Framer tips and tricks into Figma Framer tips and tricks and tricks to your inbox. Very simple, very clear. Nothing fancy, straight to the point. Then we have visuals. So what kind of graphic or animation or video or other asset can we work with here? We'll have equal, more or less weight than the text. And what I mean by that is, is it gonna take up the full screen? Is it gonna be super big and the text is gonna be small? Like what is gonna be the balance between the text and the visuals? In my case, I think the text is gonna be the prominent thing. Here we have a couple of examples. You could be using real photographs. So if you're doing like HR or something, maybe where you want to show people, then it might be an idea to use actual photos. If you're doing something techy, maybe you're using 3D illustrations like this, and you could be using just regular illustrations and even animations. In this case, I've created an asset that is just two simple logos. So we have the Figma logo and the Framer logo. A pretty simple asset, but I think it's enough to get my point across with this message. Now let's jump over to the desired outcome. What user action are we looking for here? Are we looking to book a call? Are we looking to purchase a product immediately? Are we just looking for them to browse the website? It might be a bunch of different things. In our case, since this is a weekly UI design tips newsletter, it seems like, we're probably gonna go for 
some kind of input field and a button. So a sign up flow. So we decide upon that. It's going to be a sign up flow. That's the main action. Then we go over to the inspiration. So in this case, I start with the structural inspiration. We want to keep in mind our message and the desired outcome, of course. So we make sure that the hero sections that we choose, everything we print screen or screen dump, we make sure that they fit with our context. So we make sure that they have enough space for our heading, our body, our call to action, and the visuals we're using. I usually use Lapa.ninja to do this kind of structural inspiration research. You can use whatever resource you find the best, but that's my tip. And I've already done this research, so I found a couple of different things. So for this one, I really like this narrow grid. I think that's something that is becoming more trendy and more popular now. I think it's, it looks good. So that's something I want to implement for this website. And we can see the same thing here. I like this example where we have the visual above the text, like this. This length of the heading seems very similar to what we had. Also, this one, having the sign up form here and then having the call to action very clear in the top right, that's a common pattern, but I want to do that as well. And this text, this body text is a bit too long and this heading is a bit too short, but it doesn't have to be exact. I just want guiding direction, really. So that's the structural inspo. Then we have the stylistic or the style inspo. Once again, keep in mind our message and the desired outcome. What should be the tone? Should it be lots of color? Should it be simple and clear? Now for me, since this is a personal website and I like the minimalistic and chill look, I want to have a dark mode. I want to use gradients of different sorts, play with colors a bit. I really do like this linear gradient in the background here. I'll probably have something like that. But this is it for my stylistic inspo. Now it's time to move over to the design part. Here's the place where we mix and match. So we tweak sizes and positions based on our structural inspo. We play around with everything until we find something that works. And if we have a pre-existing style guide or design system, we can use that, of course. So I have some things here. I have headings and body texts. I have colors, I have a logo, which is just my face, and then I have the illustration. So if we put it here into the hero, so let's start by actually creating the grid. So I'll create a rectangle just to have something to base it off. I want it to be, let's say 640, so it's very narrow. Add the grid, 12 columns, and I'll increase the margin so that it maps like this. Cool. Okay, so we have the grid. Now I'll grab my face here. I'll grab the smallest body text. These will be links. So maybe we have videos. Maybe we have about and maybe courses. Something like that. I'll add an auto layout to those. 24, maybe 32 pixels. I'll duplicate this and I'll create a button in the top right like we talked about. I give it a background color so that we can see what we're doing. I give it a fixed height. I'll give this a bolded look for the buttons. I'll round it. I actually grab this color and add it here. Okay, so let's round it again. Decrease the opacity of this one so that it gets this glassy look. I think that looks nice. I'll have the call to action, which is join the newsletter. Something like that. Then we'll add an auto layout to these. We'll call it nav. Maybe we'll just capitalize these. And we'll set a fixed width to it. Oh, fixed width. And inside of here, it shouldn't be packed, should be space between. And we'll position it 24 pixels from the top like that. Okay, so we have the nav. Now let's go over and grab our copy. So we have this and this, copy that, go over here, paste it in. So oh, it didn't end up in the frame. Map it to the grid, map this to the grid. I'll give it an auto layout as well. And say text, maybe 32. This is very big at the moment. Let's maybe bump it down a bit. It doesn't have to be exactly what I had in the style guide. We could do that as well. So if we try to add that style, now the text is very small. Let's center everything. 
and we'll grab our illustration have maybe i don't know 72 so divisible by eight what are we missing here we're missing the input fields but we're also missing that linear gradient style in the background i wanted to go for so i'll grab this linear fill add that to the background maybe something like this yes okay and then we wanted an input field with a call to action so i'll duplicate this twice or not duplicate it twice i'll just duplicate it once center it this should say enter or maybe it just says jane at doe.com and that's the way we indicate that it's an input field with the mail address 280 or maybe 320 and we'll change this color to this neat linear gradient the white i'll just grab a dark color and then i'll reduce the opacity because i'm lazy and maybe this says join for free we add an arrow center it and maybe this button here should actually be bigger and have some more padding the same with this 64 32 and center center now if you want to learn how to use these techniques more in depth i have a video series on how to create landing pages so check that out here now until the next one i want you to have a great life we'll talk soon ciao